Hey everyone, Walt here. Uh, while I'm waiting on a few more parts to come in to uh, build this thing back up to normal, I uh, figured I would show everyone um, a couple calibration steps to take, uh, both with the um, belts and with the eccentric nut that goes on your V-wheels. So, uh, Y-axis y -axis belt tension should make a, a very low plucking sound. You can you tighten too much. You hear the high pitch. That's a little too much. It would still work, but there's no reason to stretch it out that much. And uh, the tighter it is, the more work the motor has to do, and then you run into the potential of bending something. So right here, you know, here's too loose. No plucking at all. It's just a little too loose, a little tight. You get a nice low sound. You get even lower. As long as it reverberates, you're good. If you can get any reverberation out of it, it should be tight enough that you don't skip uh, steps. So nice and smooth. Getting some reverberation, that should be just fine. Not too tight, not too loose. Now, in order to address the eccentric nuts, they're on this side of the Mingda Magician, but this is gonna work for all printers. Um, just, it might be on a different side or located elsewhere. The eccentric nuts are these nuts right here between the wheel and the bed. So you see you have two of them here on this unit. So when you turn these, it pulls this wheel back away from your V-slots or pushes the wheel closer to your V-slots. So you back it off too much and then your bed will be loose and jiggling and you'll actually be able to move that back and forth between that V-slot area. So you get it just the right amount of tightness. So uh, they tighten uh, by 360 degrees. So you can keep turning, it gets too tight, keep turning and I'll start to loosen up again. Although uh, if it starts getting too tight, I recommend you just go the other way. So you don't want to accidentally over tighten it and put a scratch in your wheels. But what I aim for is I just get a finger in there, hold the bed still, and uh, I try to rotate that wheel without the bed moving. As long as my finger is able to reasonably rotate each wheel, it means that the uh, the wheels aren't all locked on too tight. They're they're down inside the the V slot and they're sitting firmly, but they're not so tight that they can't be spun independently. So I get that. I feel like that's just right, and I, I you can check all four of them. The other side should be reasonably the same tension and uh, these should be both really about this both should be about the same tension when you're spinning both of them uh, so you can spin the right one spin the left one and uh, one shouldn't be easier than the other they should be about the same get them as close to the same as you can and uh, make sure you got no rocking when you start to pull and push on the bed they should be firmly seated in there but spinnable and uh, that'll do you for the y-axis and uh, in my last video I covered those GT2 pulleys and uh, the y-axis pulley sits right back there and that's been replaced and you can see it's very smooth no wiggling so that's with the new aluminum pulley installed so this y-axis should be good to go for the long haul. Now we have our x-axis here. Uh, you do not need to remove the x-axis to do what we're going to do. Mine's just removed because I wanted to overhaul my entire system, clean everything up, um, re-lubricate anything where it needs lubrication, and uh, I replaced uh, some parts with some slightly higher quality parts. One thing, if you do take it off, do not put pressure on this guy. You don't want to sit it like that for a prolonged period of time. Um, when this thing bends, it will affect your uh, Z probe for the bottom of the bed.
So make sure we don't put too much pressure on that or bend it. So what I did here, you can see I also replaced this with the uh, two G, uh, GT2, it should be the 20 tooth with the five millimeter bore. And in my last video, I had a link to that product. So you can see here, we'll give it a hold. Much, much better than the plastic ones, little or no wobble. You see it's um, sitting somewhat in the middle, as much in the middle as we can really get it. We don't want this to sit down onto the actual uh, body of the stepper because then it'll create friction. We need to have a little gap there, but this is fine. This is good. Uh, right now, tension, we got a little bit, a little bit of reverberation. A little more wouldn't hurt, but that would have worked. Getting a little plucking. It's not loose, not droopy. This would work just fine, no problems. A little tighter, wouldn't hurt. A little looser, probably wouldn't want to go much looser. Right there, not bad. Just pull it, feel it. Don't go too crazy, don't go too hard. Uh, by the way, it is nice to have your stepper motors detached when you're doing this because when you move your axis, you're actually generating electricity in your stepper and it'll feed back through the pins here and go back to your main board. Uh, you want to avoid that. Uh, if you do it too fast, you'll actually see your screen flicker even if you have no power connected to your unit. <clears throat> that means that power is actually feeding back from the motors going back into your board and uh, that backwards power is uh, no bueno so we want to avoid that okay so it's best to uh, disconnect your step promoters when you're doing these operations because you're going to be doing some testing some moving you're going to see how uh, smooth they're moving you want to make sure that nothing's too tight you should be able to hold it and the axis will just uh, fall down on its own just slowly controlled. Just the weight of the axis is uh, weight of the carriage is enough. So this feels nice, feels smooth, no binding. Um, one thing that you really want to pay attention to here after you get your tension right, which this is good, a little looser would be fine. That that's a little too loose, a little too flabby, a little tighter. Right where we want it that's nice so your eccentric nut is on the bottom of your extruder carriage here the other two on the top these ones are locked in so your bottom one is your adjustable it's a little hard to do it when the machine's fully assembled a little easier like this but you can still do it just fine uh, i've done it plenty of times checking the tightness same situation we want to hold it still and see if we can spin without moving the actual x-axis see it's, it's uh spinning on its own that means we got a couple psi you know a little bit of pressure going there but not so much pressure that is digging in <clears throat> a lot of people i've seen have wiggle here where this will not be tight enough and you can actually wiggle this and you'll see this wiggle back and forth in, in this v slot <clears throat> It's when you don't have quite enough pressure. So it's really important to get the pressure just right here. This is one of the most important spots because if you think about it, um, when this is printing, if this carriage is floppy and this is just falling forward instead of nice and firm seated, uh, then the, um, the auto leveling sensor might be thrown off a bit and also any bumps uh, will set your whole carriage a bit off and it can it can mess up quality of print in a lot of different ways so just real quick as an extra bonus so so we covered um y and x belts y and x eccentric nuts and uh, v wheels uh, just as a quick bonus while i have this detached i'm going to show you guys something real quick here so here's your hot end right 
This is your heater block. There's your thermistor. And here's your uh, heating element. So, the heating element and thermistor can be screwed out right here. With the Allen wrench is provided. Uh, you do want to take off this little shroud here, right here and here, and the fan in order to get anything more than the nozzle out. So if you want to take your heater block off, you're going to have to take this off because this will have to uh, turn if you would just want to take that off. But if you want to take your whole hot end out, including the uh, heat break, there's a set screw behind the fan. So if you take this fan off, and right behind here there's a set screw, you undo the set screw, and then the whole hot end will come out. So uh, if you don't want to pull these all apart while it's still assembled, you can take this fan off. <coughs> Sorry. Take this fan off, undo the set screw, then your whole hot end will pull out. And uh, inside the hot end, remember you have a bit of PTFE tube. And Mingda sent you in, in the original kit replacement PTFE tube. And after a few thousand hours of printing, it might be smart to replace it. I've recently replaced mine. And let, me, let me show you one second. So. Here's the replacement that Mingda sent us, and you can just uh, snip a bit off. Here's what my PTFE tube looked like on the inside. Uh, the dark end was towards the hot end, it sits inside under the uh, coils here. So when you pull this uh, nozzle off, then the heat break off, behind the heat break where the hot end goes into the heat, or I'm sorry, the heater. The heating block will be this and uh, it's a bit hard to get out um, you need some like needle nose pliers and something to push it from the other end uh, Allen wrench worked pretty good but I was eventually able to get it out but you can see it was uh, getting old getting used crusty um, what you want to do is just get your new PTFE find the nice flat side so it's a nice flat nice cut side and what Ming descent was good you're gonna just shove it in there and then there's gonna be a whole bunch hanging out so you're just gonna basically sit it down on something you don't mind chopping use an exacto knife or a box cutter and once it's pushed all the way into the hot end where the old one used to be you're just gonna use that box cutter and slice it right off at the metal so it's a perfect nice even flush slice at the metal. Anyway, that's the way I did it. There's a bunch of ways to skin a cat. I've seen PTFE tube cutters and everything to make it perfect, but uh, the box cutter did the job, especially being able to use the metal hot end as a guide. And then now, inside my hot end, I have perfectly clean, nice, brand new PTFE tube again. And then you just put it all back in, uh, tighten it up, set the set screw. We can make a longer video on that, but I just wanted to show that when you if you ever do get to this level of disassembly It might be smart to go ahead and get in there and Replace your PTFE tube uh, maybe every six months or so or you know, I'll, Don't go off time go off printer use if everything's working good Don't worry about it if you're already got it all disassembled and you're replacing your nozzle anyway Go ahead tackle it Pull the fan off, get the set screw, pull the whole hot end out, unscrew. Um, so your nozzle should be going on and off while heated anyway. So you're going to want to preheat first to get the nozzle out. And then after that, everything disassembles pretty easily. But uh, we can, if there's interest, I, I can make a more detailed video of actually performing the process. Uh, ignore my newbie mistakes here where I was gripping this with pliers to hold it still. Eh, it's just visual. No, no functional damage, but not beautiful either. But everything still works. And put it back on. Uh, also, with new nozzles, uh, you want to get the little... Uh, one moment. Here's just an option. 
the little acupuncture needles. When you get a brand new nozzle, it's likely that the nozzle isn't going to be perfectly bored. And uh, it could have some binding area to it. So you're going to want to uh, grab one of these needles. Just get it in there. Run it in a few times. Make sure it's nice and smooth. Make sure it's not binding. See, we can see just a little bit of copper right there that pulled off. So just shove a needle in there that's uh, the right size. These are specifically sold for 3D printing little kits. Usually when you get replacement nozzles, they'll come with the replacement nozzles. But uh, go ahead, pre-bore out that nozzle. Make sure it's not all snaggly in there so that you get a nice, clean, uh, smooth first print and you know it's not the nozzle causing the issue. But uh, the last thing I'll cover in this video is the Z. Actually, not sure how long it's gonna to take to get the parts. So I might go ahead and post this up and then we'll cover the Z in a different video because the Z is a little bit complicated as well. All right, so we got Y, we got X, and we got how to disassemble the nozzle and replace the PTFE. That's a good bit. All right, have a good one.